so good morning, uh, good morning everyone. Um, very glad to be here. So let me introduce you the argument today. Um, we have uh, very capable of constructing new technologies in order to extract um, multi-omics data and so big, uh, big data set. And with this data, we can understand better the human diseases, but these advantage, uh, advances are not corresponding in the therapeutic advances. Um, in fact, uh, as you can see in the past, uh, the 10% um, of, um, of, of, of um, chemicals that, are, uh, that were in the phase one um, clinical trials um, reached the market and just uh, after the, um, just the half of the, um, of the drugs reached the market. So also we have that the cost of create a new chemical is very high and also um, it takes a very long time to create a new entity. So uh, we told, uh, with all this information that we have at the molecular um, um, level, we can identify um, molecular subgroups or even individual um, um, patients that are well, um, well, uh, that can, are very sensitive to a, a particular ter um, therapy. So we have seen uh, that there are a lot of disadvantages in creating new drugs and, and uh, we have many data and we can handle that. Uh, we, have, we don't know how can we better handle that and the process is low and the cost is high. Um, so we need to speed up the process and reduce the experimental effort in terms in vitro and in vivo um, in order to lower the cost of the um, of all the experiments. So um, particularly suitable technologies um, that we are currently use is deep learning. Uh, roughly speaking, deep learning is just several connector uh, layers with um, many uh, neurons inside that are learning a complex function. Um, so uh, this, um, these networks are uh, uh, really useful and uh, re we can rely on the prediction of this neural network, but uh, they are learning so much complex function and uh, learning patterns that are very complex that we can have a, um, a better insight of the problem. We have the results, okay, but we don't have the, the, um, the how, how the prediction are working. So uh, that's because uh, our, um, our network is complex and is a sti uh, still a black box. So that's why we devise uh, our model that is a neural network that can predict drug sensitivity for, um, for us, a uh, cancer cell line, um, pan, can uh, pan cancer cell line. Uh, in particular, this neural network is divided in three branches, the left the, um, and the, um, the right, and the below. Uh, in the, um, the right, we um, learn a drug uh, representation. In, uh, to the left, we have a uh, multi-omics uh, representation of the cell, cell line. And below, uh, a neural network that combine the representation and try to um, predict, the, uh, predict the, the sensitivity of, um, of a cell line. Uh, we use multi-omics data, in particular mutation, amplification, deletion, uh, also expression in order to <coughs> compute uh, pathway activity. And to the, um, <coughs> for, the uh, for the drug, we use a uh, PubChem fingerprint that is um, um, uh, an information for the, um, for the structure of the molecule and also Volsalp plus the descriptors that are basically um, that encodes the information, uh, the properties of the molecule and uh, the pharmacodynamics properties. And um, uh, we uh, encodes the response as AUC, so area under the dose curve. Um, you see that um, this uh, curve is uh, composed by drug concentration and cell viability. So it means that if this um, area is uh, is low, represent high sensitivity for the, that cell line. In particular, we devise for the multi-omics embedding um, a visible neural network, uh, which is a neural network uh, is uh, biologically inspired uh, because its structure is based on gene ontology biological process hierarchy. From the, so it, these uh, subunits are um, gene ontology uh, and uh, from the 
from the more generic uh, to the most specific uh, gene sets. Each subunit takes an input uh, the genes that are associated to that gene set and uh, the, the path to activity of, the, of that gene set. Uh, this uh, particular structure is um, well suited for the interpreta interpretation of this model. Um, in fact, we uh, have devised, um, we have um, devised um, um, this method uh, for, the, for the inspection. Um, our uh, method is based on the uh, Phineas Gage accident that um, uh, in which Phineas Gage um, was uh, during a work day um, had this accident. The, uh, an iron pipe went through his frontal left lobe and uh, um, he survived, yes, but um, his, his behavior changed forever. It was a calm person and after became a very nervous and uh, blasphemous uh, person. Um, so this is the first case of evidence or rule uh, of the brain in the specific mental change and behavioral change. So we created a relative improvement score, RIS score, that um, basically perturb the model in order to find the gene ontology that are most important for the prediction. Uh, in particular, after the training, we get the prediction of the whole model. After we silence a specific gene ontology and we get the prediction and we compute the deviation between uh, these two uh, predictions. After we silence all the children of that gene ontology and we compute the deviation as, as well. And after the normalization, um, we have a score for this specific gene ontology um, and uh, that encodes uh, its ability, um, it's, uh, it's important in the, in the prediction and also the ability of combined information from above and from, uh, from its children. Um, we see an example uh, for this uh, cell line that is uh, responsive uh, to this drug, um, we have that onion trans transmembrane uh, transport were, uh, cru was crucial for, uh, prediction, for our prediction. And we search in the literature for, um, for confirmation and we see that this paper here uh, claim that overexpression of ATP binding cassette ABC transporter reduces this, uh, the cytotoxicity of this drug. Uh, well, um, um, but our, in our case, our cell line was responsive to this drug. Um, so we guess that um, some gene of the ABC transporters uh, were now regulated. In fact, um, in our case, ABC G2 and ABC C9 uh, were now regulated and, and also these genes were, um, this gene was mutated. Uh, we also inspect um, our model and in particular we interpret the drug feature uh, of our uh, model using the deep lift score that is a commonly used uh, score for interpreting uh, the feature, the importance of the feature. In particular, um, we see that metabolic stability was uh, really important for our, uh, for our prediction um, that is measured in, in human liver that is, um, that is uh, normal for uh, anti-cancer uh, therapy that are uh, metabolized in the, in the liver and also uh, D8 and CD, CD8 here and here that refers to lipophilicity of the drug in particular if the red dots are in, uh, on the left. Uh, they, um, uh, they means that high level of this feature contributes to high level of uh, sensitivity. So just um, uh, roughly speaking about the data imbalancing, mm -hmm. our, our real world um, uh, data has very skewed data. Um, you see, in particular, in our data set here, the higher classes were mostly represented to um, 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 with, uh, with sample with uh, non sensitivity uh, for drugs uh, for the drugs of our data set. In particular, we, with this class, we have 100,000 samples that were not sensi sensible 
uh, and in the most sensible class, we have just one uh, near, uh, near 1,000 uh, samples. So we are talking about uh, ranges of numbers that are completely different. Um, so we use this distribution in order to com uh, compute weights, um, penalized weights, uh, actually. And um, we use, during the training phase, we try a weighted random sampler and weighted uh, loss. Uh, just a comparison with uh, a, dr a drug cell that is another model based on the visible neural network. Our, um, our model performed better uh, um, with the data imbalancing uh, um, uh, methods and uh, multi-omics data. And in particular, you see that during the five-fold uh, cross-validation, uh, five um, our, our uh, results were stable during the, the cross-validation, yeah. yeah. while they, um, with their model not. Um, well, our model was um, trained on the, just to predict the one drug sensitivity. But um, many tumors initially respond to the, um, to the therapy, but after um, um, some resistance mechanism arise, or even probably the, the tumor has already have. Um, so many cancer therapy uh, device to, um, to drugs or more, uh, to combine its drugs in order to prevent this resistance mechanism and potentially also avoiding some toxicity for the patient. And um, uh, how, why the, this combination works? Well, because uh, these two drugs probably um, can um, target the same gene or also target genes in the same pathway or target genes in the related pathways. Uh, or just also um, these drugs can um, enhance the transport, distribution, metabolism, and so on the, the other drug. So we uh, use two kind of methods. One is the conceptual method. Um, we say if two drugs have close target are synergistic. So using our RIS score for a specific cell line and the drug, we compute uh, the RIS score and we take the, the most important gene ontology and we mark as synergistic the drugs that uh, target the, um, uh, a gene in, the, in, uh, in this gene set. And we see that um, uh, using these um, basic met methods, we can, um, we can predict very well many, many, many combination and also we use an architectural method, just we have um, changed our model in order to, uh, to accept two uh, to, um, to drugs uh, using the concept of C Siamese um, networks. And um, after the training, we have that um, we get better result of a standard uh, neural network with four linear layers. So um, we have seen that machine learning is a powerful tool um, in that is training when you train uh, on it on the screening data and using the knowledge of molecular feature, it can accelerate the process of, of creating a drug or, um, or find the, um, uh, the perfect therapy for a, uh, for a person, uh, for a patient, or, uh, the, or also a combination therapy uh, for, a, uh, for a patient. And also explainability has an important role in order to, um, to detect the, the pathways that were more important and also um, improve the trustness in the prediction from not machine learning aspect. So um, I want to thank you all for, um, for the attention and also my, my, my group's lab. Thank you very much. No, it's a pan cancer. So we have mm, 300,000 near uh, 400,000 samples. Um, sorry, um, 
combination um, of drug and um, and um, and cell line. In particular, we have mm, 12, 12 uh, cancer uh, type of cancers. But um, for the cell lines in particular, we have uh, 900 cell, uh, different cell lines. Okay, right. but at, at, the, at the end, it's uh, it's a essentially patient specific. So you have different samples for different. This is all for the interpretability, uh -huh. yes. So, um, and also, um, you could, could see as a, a, a merging information for the, for each gene ontology. So that's why we we devise this. Um, it's like the the gene set enrichment analysis for expression, but for multi omics data. They are not tra training on the same feature. Uh, we have added more, and then we see that uh, our feature were um, were useful. It, um, each method separately, um, it's uh, an improvement for the for the, for the ne uh, neural network, the data balancing, the amplification, also the deletion, and so on. So Singularly, I'm it's. Uh, Yes, I have tried um, uh, with Dave Fisher and uh, I get mm, much higher error. So our Fisher were uh, particularly useful for uh, so the features. Yes. Okay, thanks again.